Excellent. Good to see you all. So, okay, let's get on with this, shall we? And look at the part two about activating the city powers, the alchemy of wealth, and just having a little bit of a look at that. So last week, you may remember we got started with that. Who was on the Raymond Grace webinar last night out of interest? Just kind of, if you were there, just, I'd be curious if you were there, just kind of raise your hand or basically let me know. Yeah, a few of you there, fantastic. Yeah, Raymond is always a big hit, isn't he? He's quite a profound speaker, quite spectacular and absolutely brilliant. That's all I can say about him. So, oh, couldn't get on. Yeah, interesting. Okay. We do have a recording for those who couldn't get on. So let's get on with it anyway. So like I said, it's not intended to kind of throw out the fact that we're in a human experience because in the human experience, we do um, basically have human things to do. So do chiropractors, doctors, health professionals, wealth creating experts have a part? Absolutely. And in fact, unless you're at the point where you're pretty much able to teleport and do stuff like that, where you then really, by and large, you're still going to be needing this sort of stuff. Because it's all part of a journey as to mastering the powers of the city in the same way as becoming a great dancer, a great business owner, a great anything in life. So that's what we're focusing on today. So what you will basically be learning so last week we covered a lot. So we'll be briefly just jumping over some stuff here as to what we were covering. But we'll be I'll be going into a little bit into other stuff today as well, while also looking a little bit more into Patanjali's teachings and what he actually said. And of course, as I've mentioned, we are doing an alchemy of wealth that a lot of you expressed interest in. And after tonight, we'll be sending you by tomorrow an email of some kind explaining how the program will work. Um, but we'll be talking a little bit about it at the end and giving a couple of options and those who want and sending you some information. And any of you, of course, who need to have a call with someone, by all means, you know, that opportunity will be available for you. So on that note, let's get going. So this is what we learned from Raymond. And what I love with Raymond is Raymond makes everything simple. And what a lot of people say is when working with Raymond Grace, they're going, look, it's, it makes it sound so easy. What do I do next? And a lot of people who've gone to his workshops end up getting a bit lost as to, he makes it so easy. How do I do this? Who has who felt that way a little bit after the after yesterday? Because I normally find we get a lot of people saying that he they love Raymond, but at times we go, okay, how do we practically do some of the stuff he's saying? Or do all of you pretty much find it pretty easy and got the idea? Yes, Andres, yes. Yeah, in my experience, a lot of people do that. So Raymond, some people are just an absolute natural. Yeah, so he makes it easy. The good thing is I like Raymond because he does make it easy. And by and large, it is quite easy. But in saying that, generally, when you haven't grown up in the mountains as a hillbilly like Raymond and things like that, there's a little bit of unconditioning that we generally have to do. So that's what we focus on here. And just basically using the power of intention, for example, to manifest health, prosperity, and well-being in your life. And that's really all Raymond is actually saying, that really everything comes back to your intention. And if you honestly believe you can do something, you almost certainly can. So in terms of quantum physics and healing, um, discovering that, these are all things that the cities know on how to use energy to change these kind of things. One of my favorites has been this whole idea about the mental or psychological root of all illness. And the more we understand that and understand everything is energy, there's pretty much nothing that's going on in us that we can't fix or understand a deeper meaning behind it. So when something's going on consistently in our life, it comes down to our thinking, our beliefs around it, and often what we're using to guide ourselves in our journey. So the metaphysics of mind, body, and emotions, and what's going on. So this is, of course, one of the things that the cities can do is to do this exact thing. Supplements, vitamins, flower essences, all this kind of stuff to actually energetically activate and bring changes and things like that. So this is by and large simplifying. Yesterday I shared, we shared with Raymond, I shared on Wednesday night for those of you who came, this is probably the summary of, this, of, the, of the great cities, everything that the cities teach. It's what basically Yeshua or Jesus says. 
And just about everything, whether it's scientific, whether it's religious, this is what is taught. And the key, there's two key statements that are there. The first one is, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen. So the first thing is that you don't doubt and you believe it. And if you are doubting, then the secret is you need to condition yourself till you don't doubt anymore. And the more you understand laws of physics and the laws of science and the laws of the yogi, you gradually stop doubting. Whereas if you've been growing up in a world where everything goes by what we see in front of our eyes, and this is why one of the greatest statements that Jesus said to Thomas, who was a doubting disciple, he said, blessed are those who don't see yet still believe. He said to him, you basically saw, so now you believe. But he said, if you can not see, but you see basically beyond, then you truly are really greatly blessed. One of, I think, a really good um, passage in the Holy Bible that actually summarizes this is the book of Hebrews. So if you go to the book of Hebrews, for example, and take a good look at this, there's a couple of ones that jump out of this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words, if you can't see something, you've got no evidence in the physical realm. In the realm of the cities, though, the faith and your belief is the evidence that you already have it. So great, every great faith healer I've ever met, and I've asked them their secrets, it pretty much comes down to that. They all admit that they already saw that it was done before it happened. I, I had a faith healer who I worked with years ago, a truly great city, and he would see people heal of cancer, get out of wheelchairs, do extraordinary miracles. And I remember asking him, what is your secret? And keep in mind, this guy was an absolutely messed up individual. He had so many personal problems in his own life, I wouldn't even know where to start. And he said, I basically, and at first he just said, oh, I just believe Jesus. I said, no, no, I'm sure you do, but there's something that you're doing before it happens. And he thought about it, he goes, yeah, he goes, what I'm doing, he said, is I see it happen. Like he said, for example, let's say there's someone who has an injured back. He said, either they've told me or I just see it. I don't know how I know, I just know it. But as I see it, I just see their back being healed. I, I see energy going into it and healing it, or I might see Jesus do something. It, it varies each time. And then what I do is I reach out and I just command it and say, you're already healed and just know that it's been done. So he said, I make a presumption, step in, but it's been done and act by faith. He said, if I pray, God, please heal this person, they will never be healed. He said, I jump in and I presume it's done and then I command it and then generally it happens. And if it doesn't, worst case scenario is that at least I've given it a shot. And I thought, hmm, I like that. And this was the thing here it talks about in this book about faith. It says that it talks about a guy who had such strong faith, but he didn't even see death. But it says without faith, it's impossible to please God or the universe because ultimately, those of you who know universal law know universal law is an absolute karmic bitch. It doesn't kind of work within your kind of the fact that show you mercy if you've got bad thoughts. It, re it rewards even assholes who do really bad stuff. Like, as I said to someone, if you don't believe in the power of the city's and alchemy of wealth, and that is a law unto itself, just take a look at someone like Bill Gates. I mean, he basically lives in incredible wealth. By and large, doesn't have a lot of consequences for what he does. And by and large, there's some pretty interesting shit with the money that he makes. But I uh, said, so the fact is, you can see the guy has no doubt about his prosperity consciousness and expects to make wealth. And he believes that what he's doing is going to work. And so it's got nothing to do with whether he's a good or bad person. And that's really important to realize that. It's got nothing to do with how hard he works. Because you can see with Bill Gates that he, I mean, he could now not work all that much and still have money. It's got nothing to do with his work. I mean, there's only so many hours you can work in a day. Yet the guy's created billions by just leveraging wealth and growing it and obviously believing it. So having great wealth has got nothing to do with how hard you work. That's only one factor in it. Nor has it anything to do with whether you're a good or bad person. And the cities know that. Um, you can be an absolute arsehole and be extremely wealthy and do great miracles. You can be an absolutely lovely, amazing person and die of horrific cancer and absolutely stony broke, as we see happen. And we spend most of our time when we're in a Western world trying to logically work this all out and try and justify our cowboys and Indians view of the world of good and evil. But, in the, but the cities know that good and evil is an illusion, just like it's talked about in the Holy Bible with the Garden of Eden. It kind of was a myth that didn't exist until, until basically Adam started to believe in it. Um, and Eve, because what happened was, as I read 
um, Catherine Ponder put it, I won't take credit for this one. She said, once upon a time, Adam and Eve were just ridiculously abundant and didn't have to work for it. They just got it. And then one day Eve started to believe the serpent that there was scarcity and that she was missing out on the fruit she could have. So she got anxious and she now to make the fruit. And they went from being in an abundance consciousness into a scarcity consciousness. And then Adam started moving into a hard work toil mentality, believing that's what he had to do to get wealth. So it's very, very insidious. Who can relate to this, by the way? Who kind of can go, wow, this kind of relates? Universal law is an absolute bitch. It really is. And if you get that, you, you it, it will change a lot on how you see wealth. It really realizes an absolute bitch. And like, as I said to someone, the fact is horrible things are done in COVID. And I'm, I'm almost 99% for certain, as much as the, the, the Hollywood movie mentality would love to see all the people who are the worst get in the trouble, they probably won't. The truth is they'll probably get on with their life and find some other, other shit to do. And then there'll be lesser people get in trouble. And meanwhile, some good people will end up with some serious side effects. And that's why it's very important to not compromise your ethics and values, but understand that being a good person and a hard worker doesn't, doesn't in any way guarantee you great wealth. It doesn't guarantee the alchemy of wealth is knowing this truth, that there's no such thing as good and evil. Your subconscious is very, very literal. And that ultimately, if your subconscious believes, for example, that money will come to you even if you sit there all day and stare at the screen and eat potato chips, it will. Now, for some, it's not going to be easy for many to believe that, but if you absolutely believe that, but it will. Equally, if you sat there and you believe with all of your heart that you have to work your absolute ass off before money will ever come to you, your subconscious just listens to it. That is why, as Raymond was saying, if you focus on what you don't want, you'll get them. So if you're not where you're at in your life right now, financially, health-wise, whatever else, it purely 1 million um, percent goes back to everything but your thought. And you said, because universal law is insanely and soberly and depressingly exact in how it works. And to the point where it can get very frustrating because you're just like, for goodness sake, why can't universal law give me a really genuine break sometime and be nice to me, you know? Overall, I'm not a bad person. You know, it'd be really nice if universal law was nice to me. And But universal law is this. This is why Jesus says here, if you believe that you've received it already, it'll be yours. You'll never get anything in unless you already believe that you've received it because the imagination is the gateway to reality or sneak preview, as Einstein said. So... What you see, what you believe, what you speak, what you claim is ultimately going to be yours. So if you're determined to claim in ill health and that the government will seize your assets and that you're going to be taxed and that you're going to be you know, shot at by drones, if you work hard enough, you may well get that. And I, it used to astound me how many people during COVID were absolutely determined to manifest the army coming in and pinning them down and vaccinating them. I mean, people were like writing this stuff constantly on Facebook. Unfortunately, Enough people kind of didn't want that and kind of were projecting different things to stop that happening in Australia. But I mean, I remember saying, God, if these people keep working hard enough, they'll probably pull it off at this rate. So what we consciously project is what we basically get. And the cities know, for example, about brain states. And I've shared this previously, but they've actually done brain studies of the cities and they found that many of the great cities, they've managed to get their brains trained to where they're pretty much around the delta theta state a lot of the time. Because the deeper your brain state is, the more likely you will be to manifest because now you're operating at the unconscious because the unconscious level is operating around in this basement level. Gerald O'Donnell, a great teacher on remote viewing who has some very profound city gifts, he says that you sub think of your subconscious like your basement down here of your house. So he said, if you're programming in the basement, if you're trying to program up on the first floor on the ground floor, but the programming centers in the basement, it's not going to make much difference. So you've got to go into the basement and reprogram it. So that's why learning to meditate, learning to kind of um, to, to speak and to get yourself to a point where if you believe it enough, eventually you'll start to believe it on a deeper level unconscious. So the city knows about the importance of slowing down the brain to start manifesting the very things that you're actually wanting. So reading energy, for example, and the thing with what Raymond did with the bother, with everything else, really, all it is, 
it's as Raymond said, it's just a very useful tool to give you something to guide and naturally, um, you know, our very na our naturally um, skeptical kind of brains. So this, when we see this going, it gives us a bit of an indication. I don't use the pendulum as much as I use the bobber. I found I really like the bobber, but I do use the pendulum sometimes. So it comes down to what you want to do and what you want to be using. And the cities had various things. In fact, if you read about many of the great cities or prophets, like Elijah the prophet had a stick, a big staff that he carried around. That was his instrument. Um, there's witches and wizards who've used wands, you know. So ultimately, they're just tools that help people because when people see a bubba going, like, let's say right now I tell you I'm working on the energy of the group to clear any negative energies and balance you all. We are, yep. But now as I start to let the bubba go, you can see something happening. And it's a little bit easier. And that's why the city's always liked to do this stuff. So I'm kind of balancing the energy of the group right now. I'm scrounging any negative frequencies or just kind of what I call chaotic energies that you picked up from the mass consciousness from people around you. Really just using Raymond's problem package all by my intention. And it's actually going pretty heavy at the moment. So clearly there's a lot going on right now. Um, Cause it's still going and still going. So I don't know who else felt pretty, a little bit of energy going on when you came, just raise your hand if you did, because this thing is just going pretty hard. So, if you, so yeah, there's a lot going on right now. And slowly, slowly, slowly as I'm doing this, it keeps going, but it's starting to settle down a little bit now. Finally it's settled down. So now I'm just gonna activate and align everyone with the Schumann resonance the universal kind of energy field and Mother Earth. And the only reason I can do this is I know that I can do this for myself. I know I can do it for all of you um, because I don't see any reason why I couldn't because I know that the stronger energy will prevail. I mean, you could resist it if you want, but most of you basically, I'm presuming, aren't or you wouldn't be here. So... I kind of shared this last week just for those who are new to give you a little bit of a background as to what I've basically done. So in terms of what we spoke about last week was about Patanjali when he wrote his Yoga Sutras. And it's very interesting what he says here. Um, so the Schumann Resonance Vibrator Alpha. Yeah, by and large around Alpha going towards Theta. In fact, good question, Mel. If you actually... Um, Science brain scientists in neurofeedback will tell you that the magic um, frequency is seven hertz. That the seven hertz is on the gateway between alpha and theta. So when they're doing neurofeedback, which is brain machinery to check and balance your brain and measure your frequency, if you hit seven hertz and stay there for a bit, that generally means you're going through some kind of aha moment or great shift. And I remember one day I was having a huge aha moment and the Guy said to me, yeah, he said, you actually were seven hertz for like about 10 minutes in the session. So that's when I knew you were really having some major, quite powerful, profound shift. So, so basically, it's interesting because one of the things that a great city master who I work with said to me, he said, many people start the path of meditation and concentration and all hell breaks loose. Who here has tried to go on a path of meditation and energy work and that and the next minute all shit breaks loose in your life like trauma comes up and emotions and your brain goes crazy who's actually experienced that yes so that means you're doing it correctly because in india in the ashrams they generally if they said to people they wanted to go on a yogic path they would they would get them into an ashram so they had support when the shit would hit the fan because as you start to meditate the trauma which is in your unconscious it's never been solved will come up and it's important to know how to let it process and be unattached and observe it like an observer. So a couple of people said, yes, anyone else, just anyone else actually had that happen to them? If not, that's fine. I'm just curious. I'm, I'm sure there must be a few more. I'd say not. Okay. Interesting. So over the years. Yep. So you can see what sustained means. See, obsessive mental chattering, the secret, for example, in the powers of the city is to realize that initially when you do it, you, the, the mental chattering will be nuts. The key is not to engage in it and realize it's just simply not you. 
in the Bhagavad, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said that basically the city knows that the Atman, which is the true soul, basically isn't engaged in any of this. That they realize that all this mental chattering, all this emotional upheaval, that, that's just part of the human experience playing out. And none of it's really you. So the anxiety that's happening isn't really you. It's just the human experience processing and releasing. And so even with my own um, master who I've been working with lately, he just often gets me to sit down and just say, just to meditate. And when stuff comes up, just let it come up. Don't engage with it. Don't try and intellectually fix it. Just let it be there until it passes, until it naturally processes, until it naturally heals. So this is one of the things that in the alchemy of wealth, and uh, for those of you who'll be joining that for eight weeks, we'll be sharing a bit about that. But for those of you who come to the Secrets of the City live event um, that's happening in March, uh, then basically, yes, you really get to experience a little bit of this. So in terms of the question, is the Atman the higher self? Basically, yes. It's like the, the true soul, as Krishna calls it, the real us. Like, you, are, I am not this. This is just... In fact, I tell people, if you really want to learn about the cities, go and watch Kung Fu Panda. Anyone seen here seen the three Kung Fu Panda movies, the kids' movies? Anyone here seen Kung Fu Panda who got kids and, and that? The good thing when you got kids, you got excuses to basically, you know, do stuff like that, like watch movies like this. Yeah, Andreas loves it. Yeah, like Kung Fu Panda. The third movie, he the only way that uh, he could but basically um the kung fu panda dude could overcome the great the mortal enemy kai was to go into the spiritual realm because this one was different he, he acted in the spirit realm and he had to embrace all of his personalities and at one stage poe said but who am i i'm so lost am i like a great warrior am i a father am i a husband am i a child who has fun am i a serious businessman or businesswoman am i an investor am i a lover and it was when he realized that he was all of his roles that he was able to overcome and beat um, Kai. So the city knows that, for example, some of some people know Warren used to know Warren Buck as Warren Buck the lawyer, or Warren Buck the financial planner or financial dude. Some of you would know Warren Black the spiritual teacher who does this kind of stuff. Uh, my kids know me as Warren Black the father. You know, my ex-wife knows me as Warren Black who is her husband, and then. Who knows what she thinks of me now? You know, maybe Warren Buck, the arsehole. I mean, I'm joking. We get on pretty well. Um, a, lo a lover would say Warren Black, the great lover. Um, someone else would see me as Warren Black, the, you know, the basically the guy who's mentally unstable because he seems to keep changing his mind. And the truth is, which one is me? And the answer is all of the above. Every one of them. And the city knows that. The city knows that they, that they don't identify with any role or get kind of attached to it. And so... Be, all this is part of the deeper stuff that, that you start to understand and on the Eightfold Path. So to me, a lot of this stuff about the Eightfold Path and this, it's just kind of bigger language to get back to basics. And the basics of the Eightfold Path is really sequential spiritual mastery and learning to go through the process. And whatever way you do that, to get will get you the same result. Would you choose to do it on a, on a Hindu meditation path, a city path? um there's many many ways to achieve enlightenment so to speak and i love what krishna says in the bhagavad gita because he basically says for some people you'll find enlightenment by being a businessman or, or businesswoman you'll you'll create a business that will serve many many people make a genuine difference in their life and that's kind of like your your gift to god that's like your spiritual service for some other people it's being a missionary for some people it's doing a bit of both like what i do a bit of both for some people, it's being an amazing wife or amazing partner or some, for others, it's being an incredible father who just turns up and shows up for your kids every single day and is there when their mother's going through a hard time. There's so many different ways that you can show yourself as a city. And this is one of the great like learnings that basically the that Lahiri Mahasaya brought a change to the Kriya Yoga in India. Generally, the belief was you had to become a monk. And that's why I did this title about how to become a city without becoming a monk. Until Lahiri Mahasaya, the city's the belief was you had to renounce society, stop being a housewife, stop being this, and go into the mountains. And Lahiri Mahasaya said, but what about the housewives who are devoted to the kids? 
What about the the accountant who works in an office but is faithful to his clients or her clients? What about the doctor who day in, day out shows up and saves lives and heals people? Aren't they too serving God? And aren't they also worthy of being a city if they're willing to kind of renounce sin or renounce the old way of being and basically commit to the path? And finally, he convinced Babaji to let to initiate. So he was the reason that yeah, he was the one who spread the mission of the yogis into India, into the, into the people. Yogananda then took it further, and he spread and he spread it further into America and into the West. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I shared with some people, and I'll briefly, I won't share all the details, but I met, I met a great, great holy man. I was very privileged to meet probably one of the greatest holy men on the planet 13 years ago due to a good turn I did for someone. The first person I just ever met, which rendered me speechless, and I was crying half the time I was sitting in a restaurant in Northbridge, just feeling his love every time he looked at me. And he was kind of, and then he gave great messages over everyone with profound detailed accuracy about, about their path. And I've never forgotten what he said about me. And it kind of brought goosebumps because at the time I was having great conflict. Like, who am I? Am I Warren Black, a lawyer, accountant, financial dude, or am I actually a spiritual teacher? Like, what, how do I serve God in what I'm doing? And he said to me, your path is different, brother, to everyone else that was here. Because everyone else, he was talking about the emissions and that. He said, you need to bring your message into, into the darkened world of materialism. Because he said, many have many hearts have darkened and turned from the path and lost their way and been caught up in business and materialism. And your society is losing its way. You need to bring your light. And the only way you, and, and you will do it through wealth, through business and being very successful in what you do, which will give you an open door. But your job is to serve in the business world and that's where you bring your your gifts to the world and he, it, it, a lot more than that but i've never forgotten that and it kind of taught and and to this day it's only been lately 13 years later but the wisdom of this man as far as hitting me and i'm really understanding what he was trying to say to me but being in a human experience of limited understanding it took me a fair while to catch what he was saying to me so Reason I'm saying this is that firstly, the city powers are available to everyone. Like every single person who's willing to pay the price, commit to the path, on it, and learn from from masters and spiritual teachers. So, for example, for me to learn the city ones, I, one of the biggest rules is to honor your master or your teacher, and you honor your master and teacher through, you know, commitment to the work, through through, through basically following their teachings faithfully and financially contributing to their work. This is all part of the laws of the city. One of my great masters who I work with, I think I invested 300,000 US alone just into his work and basically paying for different mentoring and services like him because I was very aware of that and to always honor those who I learned from. But it's another important part is basically investing and learning from masters who have things that you've actually got. And at the end of the day, in saying all that, does that mean I'm now some great master? Well, no. In some areas I, I've mastered, some I actually haven't. And overall, I'm just on the path like all of you. And I've just learned certain things because I spent more time doing it than, say, other people have done. And that's pretty much the only difference, really. These powers can be learned by anyone. And you can basically master these if you're willing to be patient, have not preconceived expectation, and learn to do this. So... Last week, we went through various things about the city powers. I mean, who, by the way, is encouraged by that? Knowing that every single one of you, no matter what you're doing, if you're a mother, you're a husband, a business owner, that you actually can do this. Here's kind of greatly excited and encouraged that everyone here on this webinar can be a great master. You just have to be willing to do the work, pay the price. It's awesome, yes. And you may not even look like one. Some of the greatest cities I've ever met, you would never guess in a pink fit they're a city. You know, they're not a monk. They're not walking around with their head kind of shaved going, you know. One of the things I love doing is when I used to, I, I'm a bit of a shit stirrer for those of you who know me. And I remember once doing a, a bit of a workshop on this and I just started by everyone to get them to sit down. And I said, and I just started doing a ridiculous chant, like, oh, yay, 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 yay. And I was shaking my head and, and I was curious to see who'd take me seriously. And a few people did. And then I just pissed myself laughing. I couldn't help it, you know. So that was my that was my idea to just kind of show people that there's just a lot of shit that people do. But as Raymond says, it isn't necessary. So, for example, when you break the city powers down, they're really quite simple. Like, a lot of this is fairly cool words and looks really good. But really, all this slide is saying here, for example, um, telepathy 
It's really the ability to transmute thoughts, read other people's thoughts, and project energy. And we do pick up other people's thoughts. And we can change people by our thoughts. And, and if you don't believe, just do any kind of study into the dark arts. The dark arts sorcerers who have been able to manipulate society are very good at manipulating consciousness by projecting thoughts. And if you aren't strong enough to resist the thoughts, you'll take them on as your own. And all the time, there's thoughts flying around which aren't your own, which are being, which, you, which you're picking up, which you're taking on, some which are family, some which are your partners. And it's a really difficult job to work out what's yours, what's the masses, and what's people around you. Who, whose head gets fucked around with every now and again with that, where you've got like, where the fuck are these thoughts coming from? Anyone kind of, or mighty only one on planet Earth that goes through that, just curiously. I had this happen to me on the on the weekend. I was with someone who I greatly love and respect, and I I, I left their presence and had a good time with them, but I felt wrecked. Like my legs were wrecked, my body was wrecked. I felt like exhausted. I felt like I didn't I couldn't function for the next year. And fortunately, I eventually worked out it wasn't me, but I'd I'd heard and felt all their thoughts and taken them on. So I allowed myself to then release them, and then I was fine again. So telepathy. So it's why it's very important to master your thoughts and your mind if you're going to be working in the powers of the city and if you're going to learn the alchemy of wealth. Because your, your wealth situation is directly 1 million percent correlated precisely in every way, shape and form with what been, you've been thinking about in recent times. And it's exact. It's really, really, really exact. So it's important to understand this and realizing that the more you can discipline your mind and train your thoughts, and this is why meditation is important. This is why I like using codes. This is why I like using this kind of stuff. And while we're we'll definitely doing that in our in our alchemy of wealth to really um, train all of you to actually go deeper, you know, and really focus your energy and focus your power. This is all Raymond says to do. I mean, and the things you can do are, are miraculous. I remember in Vegas, I think I shared last week about the Wynn Buffet Hotel. Did I share that? Just give me a... I won't share it again if I did that. Did I share about the Wynn Hotel when I was in America um, last year? A few some years ago? Yeah, okay. I won't bother sharing that again. But basically, um, yeah, there's things like that you can actually do. And I found you can do regularly. So clairvoyance through time, precognition. I got complete precognition before COVID happened, what was going to happen. Um, the truth is you can get precognition on stuff. I notice that when I get my mind in the right state, I can get precognition on financial markets really accurately. I can get it on sporting games um, really accurately if I can follow the rules. Um, one of the things that you can start to do is um, tap into previous births and future births, as I've already mentioned as well. So getting some idea about that. We'll be touching on that. Um, invisibility, there are people who've learned to actually do that. It was, well, yes, you are. If you actually read the Bible and read it properly, you will see, for example, you'll get the clues. There's one part where Jesus went completely invisible. There's about two or three scriptures where he went invisible. And when you actually read what happened, and he knew how to make his body disappear from the naked eye. I've met a guy who did that with the tax office. The tax office came to his house to raid him, 72 tax officers in, a, in New Zealand. He had numerous incriminating documents. He just let go and used his powers to invisibly mask all of his documents. So when they looked in the in the things, they couldn't find anything. They literally said, they said, okay, well, there's nothing in here. And they left him alone. And they went very, very, very disappointed. But literally his whole boxes were full of incriminating documents. But he invisibly shielded them from the, uh, from the New Zealand IRS. Who thinks that'd be pretty cool to do? And the truth is you can do that. I've done that myself. I've done similar things myself to that. I've done it about three or four times, you know, speeding fines with taxes, with audits, with everything. I've done it a number of times for myself and a few clients. It's a very useful skill to have that one, I can assure you. I was a bit naughty recently. I I um, went into the city. I was involved in a, in a course in the city. And... The parking prices were absolutely outrageous. I was there for four hours. Um, so what I did was I just thought, look, blow this. Um, I don't mind paying a couple of parking tickets um, to basically, you know, pay something, but I'm not going to pay like this amount per day. So I just parked in the 15-minute bay. I used my powers to create energetic shields all around my car, left it there for five hours, came back and never got a ticket. 
And then finally towards the end, I felt a bit bad and I thought, now, nah, okay, I do want to pay something now. I removed my field uh, and next day I got a ticket. Uh, and I, cause I thought, now nah, it's fair I get a ticket now because I want to pay something for parking here. I think that feels right. And yeah, literally you can start to do it for all kinds of things as you practice it. That was a lot of fun doing that kind of stuff. And I'll be sharing and teaching that in Alchemy of Wealth and everything else. And yes, it does take training. It does take a little bit of practice. And yes, Raymond makes it sound easy. And the truth is, in theory, it's easy. In practice, um, it's just a case of undoing what's called your pre-training that you've done that limits your ability to do that. So, for example, um, like my son, William, has the ability to see auric fields, like very clearly, very specifically. He can see your aura, your past lives very, very accurately. I can sense it and see it, see it as well, but not as accurately as him. He's developed that gift very, very powerfully. Um, as an example, is there anyone else here who has the ability to see energy and auric fields around people like as, as, as clearly as you're seeing me? Is there anyone else in the webinar who you can do that? I'm just curious. I mean, I can do it sometimes, but not consistently. I've got to be focused in the right state. So there's various kind of ones which you can do here. So I've mentioned here previously these kind of ones, the foreknowledge of birth, harm, and death, the, um, as an example, the loving kindness. So I'm just moving through this quickly um, to basically make sure we cover this. Um, extraordinary strength, I mentioned last week. Um, knowledge of distance, remote viewing, I've done plenty of that. Um, these, all these ones here, like self-healing ability or medical mediums as well. Um, Liberation of hunger and thirst is another one that we mentioned previously and before. So um, I'm kind of going to cut. This is where we started rushing through it last week, whereas before that we covered it more. So I'm going to share a little bit more on this one um, and cut and what this is saying. So you can actually do that. You can pretty much um, train yourself with your food to where it can become optional if your brain believes it enough. And I shared about Jeff Jones, Raymond Grace's friend, who hasn't eaten for 25 years. Um, exceptional stability, balance or health um, on the root of the tongue. That's another one, which the, in fact, my um, Qigong master said to me, they did a bit of an experiment with people who are having mental health issues and anxiety attacks. And what they did was got them putting their, the root of their tongue on the um, top of their mouth and breathing and they said generally within five minutes, people's panic attacks would stop. So when I went through a, a, a season of having some panic attacks when I was dealing with some mental health, which I share with some of you, I noticed that that would calm panic attacks pretty quickly, doing that exact thing. So um, to give you an idea how profound this is, I'll be sharing a little bit more later on how I used it last year, quite powerfully. One that I really want to mention is the visions of higher beings. Um, by activating your crown chakra or your seventh chakra. So as an example, I mean, this is one power I have activated and I've regularly been able to see this. So you can actually start to see the realms beyond the realms and how everything is constructed. And you can start to see that we literally are living in a very dense realm compared to many of the realms that exist. In fact, um, I know Christine's here. Like I remember we've even seen the frequency fence which surrounds the earth. It's like a whole limiting thing on people's consciousness that's been put there, like a frequency fence. Um, as an example, I've seen higher beings on many, 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 many mission occasions, including um, angels, councils, um, Yeshua, um, various others. So that's one particular thing that potentially talks about. And that's another way that you can start to activate these kind of powers because then you can start to get activated by higher beings. So, for example, a lot of my initiations happened for many, many years from masters on Earth. When I, when I was activated to the next level about five or six years ago, it actually, six years ago, it actually happened in a retreat in Byron Bay that completely changed my life, where I, was active, where I kind of went into a deep state with a master, but then I was taken in the higher realms for many, many, many hours and many days afterwards. But I remember speaking specifically anointed by angels and beings and given new powers which from that day on i was able to do where weirdly enough i spent my whole life searching for that and had given up on it at the time so that's another thing they know but generally moving up levels in powers there is an initiation kind of process that takes place 
Same example with Raymond. Why does Raymond work with me? He said that yesterday. He said, Warren, because you do a lot of good and you help a lot of people. Raymond told me recently, he less than half a dozen people in the world, he'll make himself available now for one-on-one -on -one, and I'm one of them. And the reason why is I've put money into his work. I have made sure that I voluntarily put money into his work. I've, I've sent people along to his work to work with him. I've done work to help the state. And as a result, I, in a way, I've earned his, the, his respect enough to where he's now willing to kind of impart knowledge. And I've made sure because I know that when I invest money into his work, then I've earned the right to ask whoever he works with and his higher beings and uh, uh, to basically give me the same powers. So everything I'm saying to you, I live what I do. And my eventual aim, for example, would be I'd love to get to a point like where a lot of what we do in our awakening work in the future of the world will be a, a tithing kind of model because that's the most powerful model just about imaginable. And so basically, it's it, this is just an example working with, with, with someone like Raymond. That's very much how I work with him. I made sure I invested heavily into his work. There's been probably four great masters I've worked with um, in the last 25 years, and all of them I invested heavily into their work, not just in my time and my heart, and my, but financially, and every single one of them, except for one, being Raymond, at some stage they disappointed me. They really let me down. They did stuff that was actually quite naughty, to put it mildly. And that often is a test to prove that you're worthy because as soon as you disrespect someone who's been a great teacher for you, in a way you dilute the effectiveness of what they taught. It's been a test that I've learned, but generally you will be tested, um, basically. You'll see the humanity of your mentor. You'll see their frailty. You will see where basically they fuck up like everyone else and they're not basically some great godlike being. In fact, quite they're just a normal human who's learnt great, great skills and you're really following spiritual laws. So when I followed these people, I didn't do it. For, I did it for that reason. When I ask people in our work, for example, to really work with and listen and submit to our work, I'm really saying you're doing it. If you know, for example, you're, you're, you're meant to be taught to learn, to master this kind of stuff, you're doing it for that reason. And you're doing it to follow universal laws. And inevitably, if some people outgrow our work, for example, and what I teach, you'll get moved on. It's that, that's how it works. Some of you may not resonate at all with the work, and then you would you go to work that you do resonate. Your Ketswa was very strict in the Kriya Yogi with people who wanted to be disciples and learn from Babaji. They had to invest their money, their time, their work, their everything. Very, very strict. And so... This is another secret that's talked about. If you want to learn something in the same way that you want to master financial, say, freedom, the way you're going to learn is to get around people who are financially successful. If you want to learn to be a good trader, get with good traders, not your Uber driver giving you a few tips. Likewise, people who are living the spiritual life. Raymond Grace puts it beautifully. He says, don't take weight loss advice from fat people. Don't take financial advice from broke people. And yeah, and obviously don't take spiritual advice from people who don't who basically are unspiritual and don't have a clue and don't live this in their life and it's it's very very useful so in terms of can you learn this from tapping into the higher self and higher beings well yes i mean that's one method you can definitely learn that tapping into the higher being self. but if you have, this is the thing and one of the reasons why i'm doing our alchemy of wealth mystery school i was saying to someone the other day we just the reason that we're in a bit of a mess in the world is we just don't really understand mystery schools very well anymore because a lot of them have kind of disappeared off the earth and the ones that are there now a lot of them are just really spiritual teaching be given a good marketing cool name a true mystery school works like this it has various levels like the freemasons is an example of a kind of mystery school but they have certain levels where you go in but the deeper secrets of the masonic lodge you've got to actually go high up i'm not endorsing it don't get me wrong there's some pretty naughty stuff that goes on there but they are a kind of mystery school who work in the occult in the in the dark in the dark sort of um, arts, and you actually have to go through initiations to get access to the knowledge. The Alexandrian Mystery School that was considered the greatest mystery school of all time, and people learned to time travel, to teleport, all kinds of stuff. Um, I've met two people in my life who actually time traveled into the Alexandrian Mystery School, learned stuff, and came back, and then they taught me stuff, and it was like profound, changed my life. You know. I have time traveled once in my life before, like genuinely time travel, like not that it happened when I didn't expect it. I was actually in a deep state doing some stuff. And next minute I was physically there in the middle ages and I was there for about half an hour. And it was like bizarre, profound. 
could I do it again? Um, probably, but I would. It would. I, whatever I did, I'd have to go back and work it out because it was such a, a shock for me at the time. So, in the mystery schools, they learned with Pythagoras, um, his mystery school, that he wasn't accepted in because generally with the Alexandrian mystery school, they knew this rule: you have to go through layers of initiation layers of learning before you can access higher beings. So very simply, think of it like in the Masonic Lodge, there's like 33 degrees you've got to go through or levels. Um, in the Enoch Mystery School, there's actually 49 in the Oversoul Awakening that you go through. So it doesn't matter what the number is, whether it's 49, 33, 27 or whatever, but, um, sacred number, whatever it is. The main thing is it goes in stages. And You'll often start very simply at a basic body level or the business level. Then you may end up learning to tap into this. Then you learn to tap into your higher self, and that's another level. And then bit by bit, as you start to master that, then other things start happening. Like you start getting visions, and then you start meeting higher beings. John D. Martini actually says that his study of mystery schools, he said many of the great ones, it takes you 21 years to prove that you're worthy. And that's about right. I think it was like about 25 years of commitment and study before I even started to get opened up to some of the things. And I think it was like 30 years before I got this experience where higher beings activated me. So mystery, a true mystery school, you've actually got to earn the right to be in it. It's not like a normal church. A normal church today, they're trying to get people to come in. Um, a mystery school is trying to keep people out, a true mystery school. So I kind of do it on various levels. There's like the awakening within, which is like an overall a bit of a, for anyone who's interested, kind of mystery school. Then there's other stuff even beyond that, like my financial education, which is another form in the financial. We, then behind this one, we have like our courses, like our alchemy of wealth and various others, which is kind of another level. But then as you go deeper, you go deeper levels, there's actually levels and groups that we run, for example, that we don't let people in unless we invite them in. We just don't. We, we invite people in or we feel that they're ready to join it. So... And that's for no other reason, and that's definitely how mystery schools are meant to work, because the last thing you want to do is give a child a, a machine gun. In other words, you don't want to give people access to energies and powers and knowledge that they're just not ready for, because it can actually fuck with your life and get you so disassociated and esoterically ungrounded. A, a good mystery school will ground you in the practical, help you stay faithful to your human affairs and responsibility. Many of the ones today have been irresponsible. For example, in the Ketwa's Mystery School, you expected to wash the dishes. So, for example, if you claim to be a city and then you've got a mess in your house and your dishes are everywhere, no. Your Ketwa would make his disciples wash dishes and that. In my own house, I'm putting bins out. I am I I, I wash dishes. I do shopping. I do I do that kind of normal stuff every now and again just to keep myself grounded and things like that. Um so I make sure my house is kept clean. I keep it responsible. That's also part of, you know, of, of, of basically being, being grounded, applying it then to be a good husband to your wife or good wife to your husband, not some kind of esoterically disassociated person who's neglecting your responsibilities. So that's the kind of idea of, of what a true mystery school is, I believe, in today's world. Who resonates with that out of interest? Like, finds that pretty good. For me, that's the kind of mystery school that I think today is really important, you know, to have. One that will also teach you the alchemy of wealth, because the truth is you can't change the world, especially in today's world. And as Catherine Ponder says, she said, rising cost of living, higher taxes and shit like that is just an invitation to raise your consciousness of wealth. And in our alchemy of wealth, we'll be teaching about that, what's called building reservoirs of wealth in your soul, so that ultimately you can dig into them. Because as Catherine Ponder lays out the challenge, she says, you're not really living the alchemy of wealth, which basically in the, New in the Old Testament of the Bible, for example, the, a lot of what they teach there is just simply the great mystery schools. Um, basically, from the Chaldeans summarized in the Old Testament in, in, in basically metaphorical language. And she says, in today's world, you want to have a minimum net worth of 100 million to even think that you're living anything close to the esoteric mysteries that were actually taught in terms of wealth. So if you don't have 100 million yet as a base, then you still got a bit to learn. And that's kind of what she teaches. So who, so basically who here has just had their bar elevated quite a bit? Yeah, because that's the kind of wealth you want to be talking about 
if you really want to be talking about alchemy of wealth. Now, again, you do it in stages and process, but it's lifting your consciousness to those kind of degrees. And this is a bit of a push to do that. So these are some examples here. In the presence of one firm established, all hostilities actually cease. And I love that. I, I, have, I don't have any doubt. And Raymond Gray said this last night. I said, Warren, if you and I could get enough people to do enough work, we could end a lot of this shit on the planet. I've always believed that. I still do. I remember seeing in COVID, um, <clears throat> some of you were involved in our background energy work that we were doing at the time. And some of you still do it today. But we were actually seeing, like COVID kept out of our state, we were seeing lockdown stop at the exact time we would do some work to stop the lockdown. This happened over and over again. We heard leaders get up and say almost word for word things that we mentally programmed into them using using the city powers into our leaders. We can change the world as well as change our family by learning this stuff. So I'm interested in teaching the alchemy of wealth. So number one, you can be immensely prosperous and immensely healthy, have the best time in this human experience in this fucked up asylum that we're living in. Because I personally believe more and more Earth is a lunatic asylum for wayward souls. And we come here to learn to kind of balance out our energies and become unlunatic, unlunatic so then we can prove our worthiness to participate in the galactic community. I've, uh, that's kind of um, well, uh, what I've concluded because I'm like, we can't live in a society this stupid unless that's what's going on. Something like that. Who likes my view? Even if it's not, even if it's not true, who likes my, my way of seeing it? To me, it kind of, I, I, it's the only way I can relate to what's going on in this video game called Earth. I think we're living in some kind of galactic prison or lunatic asylum where we're getting a little bit of a test to kind of learn to prove that we're no longer naughty souls and that we can actually participate in the galactic community and not be walking around extorting people and, you know, kind of behaving like, like, you know, bigots like most of us have done all of our life and just don't want to admit that we do. Um, so basically... In the presence of one established non-violence, I mean, Gandhi was a great example of that. You know, he, Jesus was an example of that. I've seen this happen in my own situation in my family where I've just stood firmly. I've, I've, said, to, I've said to someone where there was all kinds of stuff going on, I, I just had tears in my eyes. I said, I refuse, you know, to engage in this kind of stuff with you. I said to them, you are very important to me. And I said, if you want to go to war with me, you can, but I refuse to do it. And I just said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to play this game. If you want to hit me, I'll just take the hits and, and feel the hurts, but I refuse to do this. And they were so stunned, they kind of went very quiet and they ended up saying, I'm really sorry. And the whole thing was dissolved. I remember it was a profound lesson for me. Someone who was absolutely being nasty and unreasonable with me in my family, and I refused to do that. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes you've got to do that. It depends on the situation. Sometimes you've got to put someone and give someone a jolly good whack. But there's other times when you've really got to basically just, you know, stop everything and do things like that. So another example of what Patanjali talks about, um, about that once the true city you can start to eventually see that water is actually solid and that the air um, is also solid. And a basic computer is basically liquid. In other words, it's all the same form of energy as they teach in the shamanic schools. So I have seen this with my own eating and it's been like so awesomely fun for me because honestly, I was so strict of my diet for so many years. And since I've learned these powers, I'll be honest, I've been having the time of my life. I'm eating all kinds of fun stuff. I'm having ice cream again, like never before in recent times. I'm having white bread when I feel like it every now and again. I buy burgers from crazy places, which I never would go near before. Um, I have been doing all kinds of stuff. I've gone through weeks where I eat no vegetables and just eat meat and chocolate all the time and bread. I mean, other times I eat more vegetables. And I found that no matter what I do, it just, it can digest because I've learned to master that and deal with that. So it, as well as learning this to help others, you can make your life a hell of a lot better. I use these powers to heal my son of asthma when he was three, by just speaking into his mind every night over and over him, but he was healed and healing the emotions and using the power of intention. Within about three days, he was healed of asthma, completely healed at about age three. I saw my son healed of eczema at age eight by, by doing this over three months. 
So there's so much you can do with your kids when you learn these things. You can become, you, you can help bring change to your wife or husband and things like that. So there's so much you can do. You learn to, you can manipulate matter. So for me right now, like I'll tell you very truthfully, there's some of this stuff I can do, some of this stuff I haven't yet mastered. I'm not going to sit here and say everything I'm teaching you here I personally can do just yet. In fact, one of the things I've realized is my main focus has been to use it in certain areas in a practical way, to use it to basically teach others and really put a good school in place to teach as many as I can, master it with finances, do it with cities. And then I've got a set age in my life where I'm going to devote myself to mastering all this as a next stage of my life. So it's kind of knowing all this kind of stuff and things like that. There are people who can, I've seen people do circus tricks and fire walking that they should never be able to do by doing just that. So some other ones which I mentioned last time. Um, there are people who can literally stay comfortably warm in extreme cold. Um, your Ketua could simultaneously appeal in that. Bestow city to others to change the weather. I've done that quite a number of times where I've actually done things and changed the weather and actually seen it change. Um, I've been able to, um, you know, do things with the warm and cold at times and stuff like that. Some of these other, and, and, and bestow city powers to others. Um, have I done the harm by fire? I haven't dared tried that one yet, I'll be honest. Have I done the very fast or great distances? No, not yet. I haven't done that one yet. Have I bilocated? On the internet, I have doing webinars, but not yet physically. That's uh, I really want to do it because right now I need three of me to handle all the different things I'm up to. So I'm really hoping I can claim myself faster. So one of the last things I'll share a little bit about with you um, before I do a bit of a clearing and then explain more about our program and what we're doing is I even use this um did i share about this last week or did i not share just give me a yes or no i don't want to repeat this if i already if i already have yep yeah, okay repeat yeah so look basically what i did in simple terms was that i discovered that i was able to do everything from antidepressants valium and various other medication change the frequency so much that i could but i actually got it tested on homeopathic machinery Proved to prove it could actually work as a herb, took it with no side effects, and then went off it when I felt I didn't want to be on it anymore. And that was probably one of my most exciting city experiences in the last two years because it's because that was the one thing I feared. I had I had bad experiences with doctors, so I hadn't gone near medication for many years. Learning that made me realize, like, gosh, as well as helping myself now, I can help so many people who need medication for now in their transition, whether it's on their body their health to not have side effects and get good results from it so you can literally do that if you believe it you can take medication um you know everything um you can basically take viagra with it if you really wanted to as well if any of you wanted to give that a shot i mean in other words any medication but you could do that so i shared last week about some of the things i've actually done um and what we've seen happen so in a summary the city powers, you can do so many things of them. You can make things, just, you can make money manifest. Um, you can see yourself or others instantly heal around you. Um, I'll get, I gave this example last week. We've remote viewed the cryptocurrency markets, um, remote viewed um, games basically with sport, seen bank debts disappear, all this kind of stuff. Um, we, are, we are basically done. So, we, and we see many, many more. So what I'm going to do now is do a bit of an activation on you. This is a really one of my favorite codes. I love this one. So I'm going to use this one as a bit of a treat for all of you. And then when I finish, I'm going to quickly race through and share with you exactly how. Um, yeah, I'm going to then share it with you a little bit about um, how this basically works from here and what and, and our different alchemy of wealth and things like that so let's just have a quick look now this one was called the power manifestation code that was the name of this one so i just want you to breathe intra nose for four counts i want you to hold for three and i want you to breathe out of your mouth for six 
I'll remove my image to not distract you. Breathe in for three count for four counts. Hold for three. And out for six. And slowly. As you let all your mental energy focus in the center of your head, your pineal gland will slowly start to open. And you can almost imagine like a tap on your forehead, on the side of your pineal gland. But as you're meditating, it's just turning slowly. Clockwise, and it's a nice golden tap turns. Your third eye is opening up slowly like a portal as you're focusing your mental energy and your gaze right into the center of the code. And as it's opening up, some of you, you're going to start shaking and feeling the energy move through your body. Some of you are going to be seeing energies. I'm seeing all kinds of interesting things as mine's opening up. I'm seeing more miracles, more city powers just coming to me and to people around me. I'm seeing bank debt disappear. I'm seeing money like manifesting in people's pockets. It's kind of strange what I'm seeing, just manifesting. So this is kind of to activate you and help your third eye open to the next stage. To start to manifest more abundance, more fruitfulness. Activating the city powers to the next level for the alchemy of wealth in each and every person now. Activating this power manifestation code on all levels, all dimensions, all lifetimes now. Clear out any cobwebs, negative energies, or things in the way to allow a greater abundance, greater flow, and greater miraculous on all levels, all dimensions now. And clearing any blocks, interfering with people activating these powers now. And take a glass of water and just mention in here exactly what you sense and what you've seen. Just share what you felt, what happened. Just waiting for your comments. Center of the code was moving around a lot. The other part went green. Mm, that's, that's good. Felt a sense of possibilities. Perfect. Anyone else? I saw that the St. John's Cross in the middle of the code. 
Yeah, wow, okay. I always like seeing this. Got into a different brain state. Body is vibrating. Code became a gateway. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay. So who enjoyed that today? Who's kind of got, who's interested now to get a little bit more about the alchemy of wealth and what you can do moving forward? Excellent, quite a few of you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just share a little bit more about the options to move forward. So yeah, everyone pretty much. So there's kind of a few different things you can do and how I'm gonna work this is pretty relaxed. Just like I said, a true mystery school, you don't hard sell anyone to anything. You just share the options and if anyone's interested, I'll be sending you all the links and those of you and we can get underway for those who are interested. So I'll just basically share what's happening. So there's three different things I'll mention to you. The alchemy of wealth is the one that all of you I could suggest could do. That's say this is going to be an online event for eight weeks where we're going to cover all the stuff we've talked about. We're going to be talking about the Patanjali secrets, exactly how Yeshua turned water into wine and what he did. We're going to be talking about the Old Testament Bible secrets um, from the Chaldean mystery schools about wealth creation that actually give you all the tools for investing and growing business and wealth. It's literally all written there before you. It's, in fact, it's profound. In fact, recent times I've had far deeper understanding than I've just about ever had in my life and realizing that what I thought I knew um, is even more. So we're keeping that very spiritual I'm going to be charging, you know, 1,111 Australian dollars. So that's probably around about 700 US dollars for eight weeks, which is a bit of a bargain. I mean, I paid a lot more than that um, just to make it very affordable to everyone. It'll be starting in the next week or the week after. I'll be doing the exact dates. So at the very least, who's interested in this one? We've already got quite a lot of people um, signed up for this one or quite a few. Just raise your hand if this one particularly interests you. And what I can do is get you the link. And um, what I can also do is, um, yep, send you also the, um, yep. And if any of you got queries, or want to have a bit of a chat with you, with us more, then just let us know. We do have recorded trainings as well, which um, we'll mention in the email. If you really want to start off small, not a mystery school, not this kind of stuff. We do have a be your own physician training, but it costs um, you know, less than $200 for people who just want to record it to get started. So we've got various ones, but yep, a lot of you have said that. The second one is the secret of the cities. That's more for people who actually want to fly over to Perth. We're going to be doing one on the 1st to 3rd of March um, in Western Australia. So some of you I've noticed are already going to be at that event. But that one is, you know, if you're interested in that one, just send me a private message on here if you're not already coming so I can reach out to you. Because that one is not going to be a large number. We're keeping that one quite small for two days of intense kind of stuff. So if that one interests you, um, that then just kind of message me privately if you want to come along for that one. Um, it's a, it, you know, we're not really um, charging a lot for that one, uh, extra than the, because it includes in the alchemy of wealth um, as well as that. The other one is for some of you who are really keen on this one is the mystery school that we're actually now running. And what that involves, it's a more structured systematic training of which the alchemy of wealth is just one of them. Um, so as well as the alchemy of wealth, you get access to some of our other live teachings we do with William, regular one-on-one -on -one kind of sessions or clearings for your energy and activations and other stuff that we're doing. A number of you I've noticed here are already in that school, quite a few of you. Is there anyone here who at least is interested to find out more about this? Um, and I can email you. Yep, I'll send you details on this one. Like I said, this one is, the first one is open to everyone. This one I would kind of message you um, privately and kind of share more about it. Okay. Okay, this one I better make sure I get notes. A few more than I thought. Um, didn't expect quite a few, so I will. Awesome. 
No, this is exciting. And I mean, one of the things I will, I will actually share with all of you, just to finish off here, when it comes to this wealth alchemy stuff, um, and how absolutely profound this actually is, is um, I know that it's funny. I've had a dream for years to do this, more of this. And I've, I've done it privately in the background, but many of you have known me as Warren Black, mainly in the financial area. And I just realized that at the end of last year, but you know what? I either believe that this is my path or I don't and want to do more of it. So I made a bit of a step of faith and I stepped into this more, for example, and with my Global Wealth Club, I've stepped back from a lot of financial educating now, told my team I'm going to work more on the back end on that business and put more work in the Grandest Mystery School and this kind of stuff and just really teach the alchemy of wealth and live it more in my life. And I decided that about a month ago. <laughs> I've seen more results probably in my life in 30 days than I've seen in the last year. So this stuff, I, I live it, I, I teach it. I'm very much looking forward to sharing this wisdom with you and leaving a legacy in this area because, as Raven said, I honestly believe um, we can not only change our own life and our own financial position and our family, we can actually change the planet and make a big difference in people's lives and what we're doing. Okay, so thank you for coming, everyone. Who who really loved today and enjoyed this? Fantastic. Yep, wonderful. Oh, I just saw you were here, Rob. Good to see you, mate. Um, hope you're going well. Um, so, yep, yeah, it's interesting seeing some good people here. Oh, Aiden, you're here too. Good to see you. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Andreas. Um, yeah, great. It's kind of interesting. I know a lot of you here already, and it's great to see some really cool people on this webinar so thank you for attending and listening to this and being willing to kind of learn this and serve i'll be having something to you by tomorrow um and look forward to you know working with you all uh, for those of you who are keen so thanks a lot everyone and bye for now